Yo, what's up? My name is Petrowski, and welcome to my Vanillix Pokemon Mo NU PvP showcase. And today I'm going to be trying to show you guys this beautiful Vanillix that plays in a very specific way in the tier that can really shred through things and honestly have kind of little counterplay to it. So let's first things first talk about the main Pokemon of this video, Vanillix, and then we'll cover the supporting team. This Vanillix is fantastic being timid. 31 special attack, 31 speed, 29 special defense, 20 defense, attack doesn't matter, 21 HP, and then having a choice star for item. We're going to go ahead and look at the base stats for Vanillix. So it's boasting some decent-ish defense stats, being 71 HP. Attack won't matter for this video. There's no physical moves on this thing, although it is an interesting option to be able to have it mixed. 71 HP, 85 defense, 95 special defense. 95 special defense is pretty solid. 79 speed is a very weird and awkward tier, but we're going to be making up for that a lot with, you know, the 31 speed IV and the choice starve and the timid. So we want this thing to be as fast as possible. The speed is very important for this thing. We need it to be able to outspeed things and one-shot them accordingly. It's obviously going to be EV trained and 252 special attack and 252 speed, and I actually just realized that I didn't put four other EVs in another spot, so I'm actually missing a stat, which is funny because I'm actually recording this intro after completing all of the battles, so I was missing a stat, which doesn't matter too much, obviously, but it's just funny I was missing a stat for the entirety of all the battles, but let's go ahead and get into the move set explained. So I love this move set, but honestly, uh, there's really only going to be one button you're clicking for most of the games, and that's going to be Blizzard, but we do have Blizzard, Flash Cannon, Water Pulse, and Signal Beam, all for great coverage and high damage special attacking moves. Vanillus doesn't have the best move pull by any means, as you can see, since these are its coverage moves. Like, Water Pulse being the water coverage move is very funny. Signal Beam is okay. Flash Cannon's okay. Not, not, no great moves besides, like, Blizzard. And the reason Blizzard is incredible on Vanillux is that van when Vanillux enters the battlefield, it has an ability called Snow Warning, which is similar to Tyranitar's Sandstream for any OU players. Snow Warning immediately summons Hail. It immediately summons that weather for Vanillix to take advantage of. And Vanillix, when Hail is up, Blizzard will never miss. As you can see here, it will never miss during Hail. So as long as Hail is up, I think it lasts five or so turns when you bring Vanillix in, you're just going to bring Vanillix in, you're going to Blizzard everything to death until everything dies and until the hail wears out. And there's really not a ton of counterplay to this besides switching to something that can tank the blizzard well. But to be fair, Slowbro is... I believe Slowbro actually overtook Venusaur recently. Let me check. As the most played Pokemon in the tier. Yeah, and Slowbro actually tanks it very, very well. So I think it takes like 29% or like 21% damage. So Slowbro being the most Pokemon of the tier, being able to wall this thing is a bit of an issue. Uh, Vanillix is definitely a... It's not a very meta pick. I actually have no idea. I mean, it's 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 mid there. Okay. Honestly, more meta than most Pokemon you'll see me play at 7.4% with a 55% win rate, which is pretty nice. So honestly, better than I expected. You know, not bad. But yeah, that honestly about wraps it up for Vanilla. It's a pretty simple Pokemon. You're just going to want to come in, have that hail, be able to Blizzard. It just stab damage from Blizzard because it's Ice type, which is super nice. You're just going to want to outspeed everything with Choice Starf. The three, you know, th the three punch combo is Summon Hail, Choice Starf for speed, Blizzard for damage at 100% accuracy. And you just want to keep spamming Blizzard and kill everything as possible before being able to switch him out or before having to switch him out or before having to pivot to another Pokemon to deal with something you can't on Vanillix. You are going to be trying to pivot in and out of Vanillix throughout the game to resummon that hail because it only lasts a couple of turns so maybe you don't you know maybe you don't kill all the Pokemon you need to within that five turn hail you need to like switch it out bring it back in resummon that hail because hail can wear out and then you'll just be sitting there with a 70% accuracy blizzard which is a lot worse than a 100% accuracy blizzard but anyways let's go ahead and cover the rest of his supporting cast the rest of the team and my reasons for picking them okay if you've seen any of my videos before you might be familiar with this superior it's my go-to timid fast special attacking grass type with hidden power ice substitute call mine kind of setup grass type user giga drain really 
doing a ton of damage and healing it back a ton. Really great Pokemon. Just very, very fast. I think it has like 113 base stat speed. Timid, 31 special attack, 31 speed. Just a really nice special threat used to counter certain things, especially Slowbro. Slowbro is not going to be able to one-shot this thing with Ice Beam, and you're going to be able to Giga Drain and do a ton of damage, healing back up a ton, and kind of weighing the that battle in your favor. Moving on to the next Pokemon, you, this one I want to talk about a little more. You might have seen me breed this in my recent PokeMMO, you know, loot from breeding video. This Pokemon has been pretty damn cool. Um, I bred it very recently. It's a quiet War Turtle with Eviolite. Being able to run Eviolite in and you feels really incredible but the main reason you run war Turtle and NU is for rapid spin you would never run this pokemon uh if it wasn't for rapid spin it's one it's a decent rapid spin user that's also a water type which is very good typing very very good it has a decently useful move pull while also gaining scald so if you watched my breeding video you might have actually seen me go through a ton of pain to get water spout on this thing only to realize later on that water spout wouldn't be the most useful thing on this thing but you can actually see it here i did also have to breed aqua jet on it and aqua jet has been good aqua jet is a good move to have on this thing having that priority move on this kind of wall pokemon has honestly been super nice to kind of finish up super low kills super low hp kills but this War Turtle's job is to be a bit of a mixed attacker, although not doing too much damage. Mostly just being a wall, being very bulky with the defensive training and the Eviolite. War Turtle has pretty low base stats, and you need to make up for that with Eviolite and EV training, and just using it as a utility Pokemon and using it to come in. I Brick Break is mostly there, not for damage, but to break streams. I don't even think I own a single Pokemon with Defog, so it's really important for me to have this War Turtle in my arsenal against screens because screens, you know, do pop up every now and again in the meta. I have a lot of streams Pokemon, so I think it's really important to have an answer to that when it's especially really prevalent on a certain day. But yeah, Scald over Water Spout has been incredible. Water Spout isn't that great because it's, it does damage based on the amount of HP you have left. And this Pokemon is a tank. It's not meant to stay at full HP and outspeed things in one shot. It's meant to take damage and just kind of get back some damage and do pressure and have utility with Rapid Spin. Rapid, this, this Pokemon was honestly performed surprisingly. I was kind of worried its base stats would kind of leave it by the wayside in the tier, but this Pokemon performed surprisingly well. But honestly, that's enough about War Turtle. I talked a lot about this Pokemon, mostly because I've, you've probably never seen it before. This is the first time me battling with this Pokemon on my YouTube, so really excited to show it off. All right, moving on to this mill tank very quickly. You might have seen this bad boy before. Absolute fucking beast. We go impish for the defense. We go special defense EVs to make it as overall bulky as possible. I bring this thing in. Four times 31 IVs. I bring this thing in. I want to curse up to raise my defense and my attack and then have my EVs cover the special defense. So I want this thing to be a one-man army. I need it to be defensively bulky. I need it to be special defensively bulky i bring it in against a special defensive threat or a or a defensive threat or so aka an attacking pokemon a physical attacking pokemon without a fighting move as well i can bring this thing in against any physical attacking pokemon without a fighting move or some sort of wall and then just start cursing up using milk drink and heal bell accordingly to stay healthy or heal bell to like you know cleric my own team and then just body slam through everything and win the game but yeah milk tank's pretty simple absolute beast of a one-man army Moving on to Ursaring. This Pokemon is really interesting. I honestly don't use this Pokemon enough. It's very, very quite good. I do really wish the EVs were kind of in HP. I think that was a mistake looking back. Uh, not knowing that I was going to be using this in Trick Room. That kind of made this Pokemon before I really fell in love with Trick Room as a concept and before I got decent at using Trick Room. You know, I use decent lightly, but yeah. I made this Adamant Ursaring with Flame Orb. Pretty good IVs, pretty pretty damn good IVs, I'm being honest. With Facade, Earthquake, Thunder Punch. I've loved Thunder Punch. I think it's the perfect coverage move that I often need on my team. There's not that many good electric, good electric type users in NU, in my opinion, so I really like having Thunder Punch on this Ursa Ring. So this Ursa Ring is a typical Guts Flame Orb user, and if you don't really know what that means, it basically means that Flame Orb is gonna make is gonna give it a burn. You're gonna intentionally give your own Pokemon a burn, and you're gonna say, "Why would you want to do that?" Um, because its ability Guts boosts its attack by half, and it also ignores burn damage. So burn is gonna be the least damaging status move it could possibly have, and like the least impactful move. It's only gonna do like 10 damage to each turn, 10 or 50 damage. No, not much. It's not a it's not a big deal to be burned as long as you're ignoring the the damage reduction with Guts. So. 
you do you know you burn your own pokemon you get your half boosted attack with guts which is already insane on top of having stab facade facade is a move that doubles its power it's 70 base power 100 percent accuracy normal type move doubles its power to 140 base power if your status so you're gonna be having that guts 1.5 damage on top of the 140 base power damage of facade on top of the stab damage, the 1.5 from normal. So, Guts, Flame Morph just does an insane amount of damage. You're literally almost always going to be clicking Facade if you're status, even over like a super effective mood, just because it's going to be doing so much damage. And then moving on to the last piece of the puzzle. This is a pretty crucial piece, although I wish this nature was more defensive, but this is a crucial piece to this puzzle. And I'll kind of go on to explain, explain why so after explaining the Pokemon. But for those who don't know, Steelites is a pretty damn good defensive wall. It's pretty much all it's good at, though. It's a pretty one-trick pony. It really can't take many specially defensive hits. And it's really important that it can just wall any sort of physical threat, but then not be able to do too much against special defense. It can take one special defense hit, like one surf or so, um, because of these EVs and it also having sturdy. So if it's like nasty plotted up or has some sort of calm mind boost, it can still survive with sturdy and, you know, maybe dragon tail to prevent those boosts or whatever. But Steelix is my own stealth rocker to set up entry hazards while also having my rapid spinner to prevent my opponents. And that comes into play a lot throughout these battles. So I really liked this Steelix war turtle combo. I was a huge, huge fan of that. And so Gyro Ball for a bit of damage. Gyro Ball is a steel type move that does more damage the slower the user is. Steelix has an extremely slow base stat speed at 30, and it also gets stabbed from steel type. Honestly, Gyro Ball has been super underwhelming. I don't think I've done much damage with this thing, but Stealth Rock, Toxic, Dragon Tail have all been incredible. I've loved all of these moves. Spreading around Stealth Rock and Tech Toxic while Dragon Tailing my opponent's Pokemon and you know spreading those even more has been extremely strong while also having Rocky Helmet to just do more damage. Steelix is just a great defensive wall that really spreads damage and weakens your opponent's Pokemon like all around. It's really, really annoying to play against. Uh, Dragon Tail is a move that... 90% accuracy, which is very important. 60% power, which is okay. But all you care about is that if Dragon Tail hits, it's like a whirlwind or a roar where it'll knock your opponent's Pokemon out and it'll like not knock it out, but like it'll switch it out and bring in a random Pokemon of your opponent's. And sometimes that can bite you in a butt, in the butt, in a butt, in the butt, and it can make you, you know, make your Steelix just take a huge surf from Slowbro and just die. But sometimes that happens and. That's part of the game, you know, but that's basically the whole team covered. I do want to cover one more thing really quickly. The last huge reason that I want to talk about why I chose Steelix is I need to talk about Steelix on top of this three-man core. And when I say three-man core, I really mean this Vanillix, this Ursaring, and this Milting. And what do they all have in common is that they're all weak to fighting moves. Thankfully, fighting types are pretty damn weak in NU and there's not many good fighting type options aside from Hitmonchan and in my opinion maybe Girder. I like Girder. I think it's underplayed. You can play Girder with um with an Eviolite and honestly it's it's pretty cool but there's there's very 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 few like where do you even see a fighting you see a Hitmon top. Hitmon top's a good option but it's not really a damage dealer. It's more of a utility support type Pokemon with rapid spin. So uh Blazik actually Blazik I guess Blazik is fighting type. Blazik is definitely your best bet but People, you know, my, I definitely see people not run a fighting type move on Blaziken nowadays at, at times, which is mind-blowing. You should always run high jump kick, or it's going to be choice starved, so it might be stuck into a move and you can bring it in, etc., etc. Anyways, I use Steelix here because even though Steelix is also weak to fighting type moves because of because it's steel typing, they're going to do no damage to him. If you've ever seen a Steelix take a, di a, a fighting type move, you'd be surprised. It takes so little damage, so it's just very, very crucial that I have such a one-trick pony core defensive wall like Steelix having that 200 base defense stat which is absolutely monstrosaurus while having these three Pokemon that are all weak to fighting type it's just really important if I didn't have Steelix on this team this team would be so much weaker it has a chance a, a pretty solid chance against fighting types with Steelix without it it's it, it's it's pretty it's pretty you know it loses so it's just a really important thing to think about 
when building your Pokemon team, you can make your Pokemon weak to a certain typing, especially if it's a typing that is super weak in that tier, like fighting type for NU, as long as you have a backup counter for it, like a very, very strong one trick kind of counter for it. So I believe that's everything I want to cover. Let's go ahead and get into the games. I hope you guys love Vanilla. I hope you guys love these games. Hope you're having a great day and enjoy. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Enjoy. Peace. Hey, what's up? It's Petrowski, and I'm excited to be reviewing this da- game today. So, the first two games of this vanilla showcase were played off, you know, not live. They were played, they were pre-recorded, and I'm going to be commentating them over them now. But honestly, I haven't seen them in a while, so I'm excited to do them. So, this is a gr- I want to actually pause for a sec. There's a lot going on. So, I want to go back and kind of look at my thoughts on leading here. So, I look at his team, I see... A lot of things weak to Vanillix. I see Archeops, Lilligant, Superior, Ninjast. All four of those Pokemon are going to get one shot by a Vanillix Blizzard. So I'm thinking I'm in an extremely good spot. And I'm thinking I have an extremely good chance of winning this game. Pretty excited at this point forward. So I'm going to lead Vanillix. He's going to lead Archeops. I'm assuming Archeops is Focus Sash Stealth Rocks. It's a very common kind of play style on him he's kind of like almost like an aerodactyl lead at least in the past as he was in OU he does get frozen here on turn one which is insane my luck here was crazy I get the freeze the hail finishes him off that's one of the most under talked about and something that I've come to appreciate a ton during the, these uh these games is that hail finishing off that focus sash target it, it, it comes up a lot and it honestly is super relevant and it's really cool to see. So, I see this guy bring in Omastar, and I'm thinking, what can I do to deal with him? And honestly, I heavily misplayed here, I'm pretty sure, because let's see what I swap into. I honestly haven't seen it in a while, so. The, o- so <clears throat> the only good swap here is Ursa Ring. I should have swapped into Ursa Ring. My Ursa Ring has T-Punch, and I think I just forgot that. I think I just didn't consider that an option here, because I just didn't. I didn't think about my Ursa Ring having Thunder Punch. But he's going to set up with Shell Smash. Go ahead and get that White Herb proc, which restores the defense drop. I'm going to go try to kill him. I'm actually extremely shocked at this one shot me. I mean, yeah, you see me check. I'm like, wow, holy shit. I can't believe that. I can't believe that Ice Beam one shot me. That was really shocking. I really, really thought I would have at least lived one Ice Beam. Yeah, you see me here. I'm also very shocked. That he outsped me. And honestly, to this point in time, I still have no idea how he outsped me. So, he it seems insane. Um, it seems insane. So, Shell Smash is a crazy move that raises his speed by two stats, by plus two. And then his special attack and attack by plus one. And then it minuses his, his defense, either severely or somewhat. Uh, so here I'm, I'm bringing in Steelix, knowing that I'm just going to die, and knowing that I'm just trying to... My, my my goal here is to sacrifice Steelix, use its sturdy to Dragon Tail out the Omastar, because I just have, I have no idea, to, no way to deal with it at this point, because the Shell Smash made it so strong. It's now lacking its White Herb, so it can't set up so strongly again with Shell Smash. It will be able to set up, but it will lack, it'll be weaker and have less defense. So I bring... Vanillix back in here. It is good that my Steelix dies to hail actually so I can bring my Vanillix back in throw up the blizzard Unfortunately, his ninjast has protect which is really smart the reason you run protect on ninjast which was Perfect timing for him the reason you run protect on ninjast is to get his ability for free on the first turn You get that speed boost proc his ability is speed boost which boosts his speed by one stage at the end of every turn Pretty damn good pretty cool ability. I really like it um, so here this blew my mind. It was super, super, super unlucky that um, as soon as I brought my Vanillix back in, the, uh, the the hail wore out. And honestly, looking back, I probably should have just went for the 70% Blizzard chance. I, I really made a lot of misplays this game. It's really sad. I feel, I feel like I totally could have, I totally should have won this game. But I, I am so unfamiliar with playing against Omastar. And I played against it multiple times, I believe, throughout these games. So I'm, I'm definitely learning yet a lot more. Um, I, I made a lot of mistakes. I made a lot of mistakes against Omastar and Ninjask. I just didn't. I just didn't play well, um, and that's okay. That happens. So I definitely deserved this game one loss. I made a ton of mistakes. It was against a very high-ranking player, though, as you can see. I believe this guy was rank 56 
at the time. So it was, it was a pretty decent player. Uh, he played better than me. I had the advantage with my team. I had the advantage with the vanilla, and I still just lost the game, and that was fully on me. But that's okay because I, you know, I redeemed myself in some later games, and this was still like a decent game. But you know, it wasn't just like a total trash show. But I definitely misplayed a ton. So he, I know that he's gonna set up. I know that I know I do know that Lilligant runs Quiver Dance. So I'm gonna switch into Vanillix. Hopefully be able to outspeed and get that huge blizzard up. I'm really just a lot of this game is switching in and out of Vanillix, you know, bringing Vanillix in, trying to get those big blizzards on good targets. This is a game for him to shine. And it was a little, it was pretty unlucky that the last hail turn wore out uh, as the ninjas came in to protect. That was definitely unfortunate, but I think I just should have thrown up the 70% blizzard. So I'm going to throw up the blizzard now on this Lilligan, and I believe I do one-shot it, so I was surprised this guy stayed in. I guess he doesn't know Vanillix's strategy, which is fair. It's not, Vanillix's strategy isn't the most common strategy, but it is very, uh, uh, what's it called? Like one mind, simple minded, one minded. You, you, Vanillix's main strategy doesn't change a whole lot. It's always going to come in. It's always going to be choice starved, like almost always. Um, at least from my experience, I feel like non choice starved Vanillix is just bad. Is the issue? I, I I love the idea of non choice starved Vanillix. I love the idea of like a bulkier leftovers one or a life orb one, or you know something of that regard, or choice specs and doing something funny with that, but. It really just, yeah, it really, it's Choice Scarf, just, this just seems to be the best set. I feel like this is the best vanilla set by far. So I bring in my mill tank here, and I'm just like, I, dude, I have nothing to deal with this thing properly. Um, <clears throat> just trying to get something going. But as soon as I see my body slam hit for 17% damage, I'm very quickly like, okay, like, I, I, I lose this game. I, 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 I very much realize, I'm like... There's no way I can win this game, and, you know, that's okay. That happens. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, what do I do? Just buy some again, let this thing die. And then from here on out, it's just me slowly losing my Pokemon. Nothing special. My greatest misplay of this game, by far, was not switching in the Ursa Ring to deal with the Omastar quick, quickly. Um, I think that was my... I, think, I believe that was my biggest misplay. I, th I think that was... I think... My Ursa Ring could have lived an attack and <clears throat> dealt with him promptly. If my Ursa Ring couldn't survive an attack from him, it honestly doesn't matter. But I think he might have been able to, but it's just, you know, I, I, I haven't ran the calcs, but I think he might have been able to. He's trained, actually, he's trained in, maybe that was my thought process at the time. My, my Ursa Ring is trained 252 speed and not 252 HP, so... It's it's actually insane, dude. Omastar's damage seems fucking crazy. After one shell smash to be able to like surf down like a Vanillix or to like surf down like anything that's neutral damage is pretty crazy. I just go for the Aqua Jet here because I'm like I know that I I just need to get some damage on this thing to try to do something. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to outspeed it, and I'm dead. That's okay. GG's. Uh, game one was rough. I definitely had the advantage comp-wise, and I played it poorly, uh, and I didn't play around Ninjask and Omastar especially. That was maybe one of my first times ever seeing Shell Smash Omastar in NU ranked, so I definitely just needed to come to terms with that and understand that, and I'll see you guys in Game 2, where Game 2 is a, a great game. Very, very proud of this one. We play against Rank 8 player, actually, the Rank 3 player in the world, and I've, I've played against him a couple times in ranked, so I'm pretty excited. I'll see you guys Game 2. Okay, yo, 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 what's up, what's up, Petrowski here with game two of the Vanilla Showcase. I'm really excited to show you guys this one, so I see this guy's team, and I'm like, man, this guy's team is actually pretty interesting, pretty cool. Maybe maybe is high ranked, maybe, he, this guy could be super high ranked, or super low ranked at this point, it's like, it's like a toss up. His team seems very well built, but also has some strong Pokemon in it, like, uh, Bla Blaziken, but also has some underrated Pokemon in it, like Claydol or Magneton, so I'm excited to see who it is, and as we see, it's Leoness, who is currently rank 8 at this time of playing, and this is a great game. I think a lot of this game came down to surprise factor, and I think it gave me a huge advantage here. So, I go ahead and lead with Steelix, because I know that Steelix, he's going to have a really hard time against Steelix with most of his team, I th I'm considering here that he, well, I thought that I was 
worried about the Zoroark lead, but he ended up actually just going Blaziken and going for that flip, which is fine. So I'm extremely happy with this trade, and I want to talk about this trade. He flare blitz his turn one. I take the damage. I get stealth rocks up. I bring his Blaziken down to like 35% HP and it gets stealth rocks up. That is an insane trade. I also saw that he probably doesn't have a rapid spinner on his team besides maybe Claydol. So I went ahead and that was also an another reason for leading Steelitz, but that Steelitz lead was really, really huge. Maybe one of the biggest reasons why I won this game. Super, super worth the, the sacrificial lead. Here, I do definitely make a mistake, and I ponder it for a long time. So you see me check my War Turtle stats here, check everything. Brick Break is not here for damage, and this was a, this was strictly a misplay for me. This was kind of a this was a limit test. This was me testing my new War Turtle. I wasn't sure how well it would do. I go ahead and click the super effective move because it's super effective, but my War Turtle is not trained in attack. It's not, doesn't have an attack nature, doesn't have stab on Brick Break. Brick Break's a pretty low base power move, even though it's super effective, it only does 17% damage. Brick Break's job is not to do damage, and that was my mistake. Brick Break's job is to break screens on that War Turtle. It's not meant to be a kind of coverage move and I kind of tried to use it as a coverage move there and that was just a misplay so this is where things get really interesting I bring in my cow soak up a vol switch he brings out Claydol I always know whatever Claydol is trying to do it's probably gonna be a slow Pokemon so I'm thinking can I milk drink here first or do I curse I know that I'm faster than Claydol so if I milk drink I'm kind of wasting a little bit of my milk drink because I'm only gonna be healing 24% but I just decide it's worth it just to scout what he's gonna what he's gonna do beforehand so i go ahead and milk drink up to full hp even though it's only 24 percent hp and now i start cursing and i know this thing is going to be a slow utility supporting style play doll because he you know go ahead and he throws up the stealth rocks and the rapid spin and i think this was actually a misplay from leoness i think he tried to play this too slowly and didn't respect the power of mill tank at all and i love mill tank and mill tank was like, the fact that he didn't switch out here is is crazy. Um, Miltank did an incredible Pokemon. I mean, he goes ahead and teleports, I guess. So, I guess he does switch out. Fair enough. I love teleport. I play teleport on my plate also. Pretty great. But I'm, what, two times cursed up at this point? Two or three? I actually forget. And his... So, I'm, like, two or three times cursed up. Impish nature, Miltank. He, he's never he's never gonna one shot me there like that's never it's never gonna one shot me I am surprised it did a, as little damage as it did but it makes sense because I believe it's choice scarfed so he needs that speed and loses some of the damage so he's gonna go ahead and bring in magneton this is definitely the hardest closest battle of this of this battle um, my mill tank versus his magneton is a very risky game so each Thunderbolt is going to do 41% damage. Each Milk Drink is going to heal me for 50%. He's faster than me on his Magneton. So he's just going to continually Thunderbolt me. Thunderbolt has 15 PP, which I, I believe, which is important to note here. You know, it could come down to that, so it's important. So honestly, for a while here, we literally just sit here and Thunderbolt and Milk Drink back and forth. Me slowly, slowly, slowly gaining my HP up and him trying to... Think about what to do next. Or him hoping for either a crit or a para. I don't think he gets a crit or a para. If at all. Which is pretty unlucky for him. I do get the one body slam down. He doesn't have leftovers or anything on his magne magneton. So he has no recovery on it. So here I understand that he has to switch out. Because he has no recovery. He just loses this in the long run. So I go ahead and throw up another milk drink to get healthy here. And then he's going to swap in his Linoon. And I know that. His line noon is obviously going to be the only line noon set there really is is belly drum extreme speed. So I know to watch out for that. I know to play around his belly drum extreme speed. The issue being it's a Zoroark. That's the issue being the issue being it's a Zoroark. He comes in, throws up night days, does a 52% damage. I was very shocked that that only did 52% damage. That's honestly that. That 52% damage is so huge and really comes down to the way that my mill tank is built. The fact that my mill tank is built impish nature to cover defenses and then fully EV trained in special defense and HP. So it can like fully be like 
balty all around is so crucial. Like the fact that my mill tank is built like this causes this player to kind of panic or at least be like, you know, how the fuck can I beat this? Um, it's it's and it's frustrating. I get it. Like I think he just played too slow around the clay doll and did the usual, you know, set up your own stealth rocks, remove yours off the field. He kind of did like the the traditional play. And I think it was too slow, and it let me set up two curses on this mill tank, and then it was just too hard to stop, which is pretty crazy. I mean, it's pretty sad that... I mean, I get it. Like, two curse setups, and you just can't break through it at that point. It's pretty rough. His Blaziken also getting low from my Steelix early game is so crucial to this game. The fact that he couldn't close combat me twice so so important you know like the fact yeah like that was that's a huge factor so a lot of things went into this game that really really mattered and a lot of things had to go a very specific way he spends a lot of time here thinking he's a very good player he's gonna like you know gather himself get himself together think of a way to deal with this mill tank he's gonna bring in archaeops I don't remember this game. It's been a while. I don't remember this game super well. My HP is at 88. I know Archeops outspeeds. I'm considering here whether I want to switch out or not. And here I thought my mill tank died. I could not believe my mill tank lived that acrobatic. So for those who don't know, the first acrobatics a Pokemon throws out is so strong. Because the reason you use acrobatics, you use acrobatics alongside an item called Fighting Gym. And Acrobatics is a flying type move with 55 base power, but is doubled if you don't control an if you don't if your Pokemon isn't holding an item. And Flying Gem is a consumable item that boosts your flying type move by like 50% one time. So he had that 50% one time boost from Flying Gem, and that item con is consumed and disappears, so it also gets the boost of the acrobatics doubling damage. So it's it, the first acrobatics a Pokemon throws is insane because that combination of acrobatics plus flying gym is so much damage. So to only take like the 30% it was on my mill tank was insane. And I'm, I'm really, really surprised it lived at that HP with, with two curses up and an impish. That was, it was very shocking. So here I am in like a very, I'm in a, I'm in a scared spot where I'm like, he could just get a crit or a para or something could happen where and that's it that's the thing that happens so as soon as i see that special defense drop i'm like oh man like i need to like body slam now like i, I can't i can't keep you know playing slow anymore that special defense drop causes me to take significantly more damage as you'll see here so i don't know if you guys can see the chat log you see that that flash cannon did set 37.1 percent and each flash cannon and each thunderbolt he's thrown at me so far has done around 37, 38%. And then the next, but the next thunderbolt he threw after that special defense drop did 66.8% damage, as you can see there. So it literally doubled his damage for him to get that one special defense drop, which is so insane. So it's pretty, you know, that's, it's rough, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a huge, huge, huge deal. And that really... That kept him in the game, but at the same time, he, he really deserved that. After so many attacks, after so many Thunderbolts without a crit or a para, the, the special defense drop from Flash Cannon was definitely the least the least thing he deserved. You know, he definitely deserved that at least. At least. So I'm over here checking some numbers. I think I'm thinking to myself, like, whether I just want to let this thing die or whether I want to swap in a new Pokemon... And I ultimately come to the conclusion of, I'm just going to let it die. I can bring in my War Turtle to Rapid Spin or Aqua Jet this thing down. And I almost thought here for a second. I thought here for a second, like, do... And then I can, I can clean up the rest of his team pretty damn well with a lot of things on my team. Hopefully, Vanillix is kind of my main... My main thought is, I can sweep the last three Pokemon of his team with Vanillix. Which is like, uh, this... this uh, Vanillix was great. V this is a great showcase for Vanillix. I think it's a very underrated Pokemon. I think it performed very well throughout these three games. I was very, I was very, very pleased with it. Very, very happy. So here I'm like, okay, I might as well throw up the Rapid Spin. Um, Earth, I actually considered for a long time here, I feel like. I feel like I was worried if I Rapid Sp I thought about this for a long time. Okay, let me, let me tell you the lines. If I Rapid Spin here and he Belly Drum, I, and I get rid of Rocks and he Belly Drums, then I'm worried about letting him set up too much and get too strong, right? 
But at the same time, if I switch out immediately, he's still just he's still just gonna be in the same position where he can like rapid spin or where he's where he's still gonna be belly drummed next turn so it didn't actually matter so i might as well just go ahead and th try to throw up the rapid spin and here i'm hoping that i can either survive the extreme speed which i believe i do barely yep surviving that extreme speed is huge so i really wanted to get rocked out of the way oh i actually totally forgot about this wow this is insane and honestly probably won the game I actually totally forgot about this. So many things had to happen this game for me to win, for sure. Uh, I think I played this game... I played this game very well. I truly did. But even on top of playing very well, it was still a really hard game to win. And it was still still a lot of RNG factors and a lot of things that had to go right for me to beat such a, such a, such a talented player. Um, yeah, this is a great game pretty incredible i do know that um the the one misplay that i made was brick breaking the magneton that was I, th I think the only misplay of the game i could be wrong um at least the main misplay of the game for sure there could have been a better swap at some point but that was a great game i was very 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 happy with that game very proud of the game 1100 bp as a reward 40 matchmaking points beating the rank 8 player as someone who was ranked to like 460 at the time like i, I i've tanking elo over here like i'm losing games you know unlucky unlucky but so i felt pretty good to be a rank 8 player he played pretty well i play i think he made more mistakes than me if i'm being honest which is definitely not average like i think on average i will definitely make more mistakes than him every game you know for sure um but i think i played pretty well i think i made one mistake with the brick break on the magneton i think i played around my sweep with the vanillix quite well and I think I played around my, my mill tank and that kind of one-man army surprise factor pretty well. So, it's pretty damn happy with these games. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you at game three. Yo, yo, yo! <laughs> what's up, what's up? Petrowski here. This will be the third game of the Vanilla Showcase, and this will be the only, probably the only game that was live. Uh, I'm kind of overwhelmed as I actually just played the game that was supposed to be the third game, and that game became such you'll have to watch the video such an insane game an absolute beast of its own i'll have to make my, its own video for that game because it was just a 32 minute absolute slugfest of strategy big brain etc etc but anyway to focus on this game today i'm going to be continuing to show off this vanilla that is timid 31 speed 31 special attack choice starf it's meant to come in set up hail with its ability and then get off 100 percent accuracy blizzards all day Let's go ahead and pick our lead against this comp. Vanillas could be really strong against Altaria. And pretty strong against most of his comp. I'm trying to think what it would lose to. I'm going to go ahead and lead with Vanillas. Probably for sure this game. I don't see what it would lose to. It might lose to this. As this thing is, this thing will for sure outspeed it. This is Exceldor. Has 145 base stat speed. Um... The scary thing is if he hits his Focus Blast. This Pokemon usually runs Focus Blast. And if he hits it, I could be in for a really bad time. It probably one-shots me. If not, I'll be in a really good spot. So, we'll go and see. What's actually Vanilla's base special defense? 95. 95 with 29. I don't think I love Focus Blast. is just too strong of a move. I don't think I'll live it, but it's possible, I guess. As this gentleman quickly or not quickly just, you know awaits and thinks through his moves let's go ahead and sort through the rest of his team and understand what else i might want to do this game so hypno hitmonchan Steelix, alteria sawsbuck i love sawsbuck i believe sawsbuck has sap sipper which will be interesting i'll have to keep that in mind a lot of pokemon a lot of people don't recognize or remember the the different sap sipper. he's gonna put up toxic spikes interesting I do have a rapid spinner on this team, which is super nice. I'm actually, I actually usually, like, never run a rapid spinner, so that's pretty cool. I actually need to bring my chat box down. He has Focus Sash, but the hail kills it. That's another huge... I, I've, I've had that happen. I think I had that happen in game one or game two, where I uh, led against an Archaeops, and I just, like, one-shot it, uh, which was incredible. I'm gonna go ahead and Blizzard here. He shouldn't... It should, yeah, I should do a ton of damage here. Nice. Uh, I think this guy is just setting up hazards. He might stealth rocks here, or maybe he'll explosion. Yeah, this guy is really going for hazards, and I do have a rapid spinner, which he should actually just see 
in the fact the fact that I'm running War Turtle, you would never run War Turtle into this tier unless he's your rapid spinner. There's no reason to run War Turtle other than him being your rapid spinner. I don't see how he wins this game from here on out. Vanillix might just turbo hard sweep. This is a perfect game. Perfect game three for the Vanilla Showcase. I should absolutely be able to outspeed and just one shot this. Yeah, absolutely. I like the name though. Spronk. Spronk is a great name for Zazbuck. I feel bad for this dude. I don't think this dude made any like big misplays. I think his team has an extremely hard time dealing with Vanilla. Um, his best bet being like focus blasting me turn one with Excelgor or bringing in Hypno. I know Hypno can be very specially defensive. He brought in like this dude is just gonna get obliterated. I mean, they might mock punch. 65% is actually less damage than I thought. I thought I would actually one-shot. This thing's pretty bulky. Drain punch. He's actually gonna one-shot me with drain punch. That's surprising. Fair enough. Good for him. Okay. That thing was much bulkier than I thought. I think Hitmonchan might have a very high base special defense. If I recall. Maybe like one... Yeah, I was just say 105. 110. Interesting. But pretty low HP, lower defense. Hmm. I think I just have to bring in Steelix. I can't bring in my War Turtle yet to just Rapid Spin because I have to play around. I don't get poisoned, which is nice. I have to play around his uh, T Punch. I assume Ball Drop is pretty scary. I'm going to assume that he has Thunder Punch on this thing. Although I do have Dragon Tail on my Steelix, so honestly. Ball drop isn't really that scary. I'm gonna stealth rocks. I am gonna go ahead and uh, toxic because he's gonna be his damage is gonna be physical no matter what. Fifty four percent is a lot though. I'm so evied into defense as well, but I am adamant nature. I do kind of wish this Steelix wasn't adamant. Uh, that's okay. Whew, a lot of damage. That was that was with drain punch as well, so he like heals off of that. So crazy. Man, that's rough. The question now is, I, mean, I, I just have to stay in. I have to just try to Dragon Tail. He's going to kill me. That's okay. I just can't do much about that. Um, the question is, does he have T-Punch or not? I'm really scared of T-Punch. Very scared of T-Punch. And I can't bring in Superior and kill him because his, you know, his special defense base is so high. I think I just have to bring in War Turtle. He either has T Punch or Fire Punch. I doubt both. He probably definitely has Ice Punch. I'm really hoping to live here and get my Rapid Spin off. Okay, I'm actually faster than him, which is really surprising. Especially because I'm. Or did he use Rapid? Oh, he used Rapid Spin. I'm so silly. I had no idea that Hitmonchan could learn Rapid Spin. What the hell? That is shocking, not gonna lie. The question now is whether I go for an attack like Scald or Aqua Jet. There's n I just go Aqua Jet, right? There's no way. I think I just go Aqua Jet, get a little bit of damage. 9% is pretty damn bad, though. Um, get a little bit of damage. He's going to Drain Punch. He's going to kill me. I can't stop that. He's too strong. Wow, that doesn't kill. Oh, I should have Scalded. That's okay. He's slowly taking damage from Toxic, which is what important. Hopefully that kills me. That's okay. Okay, I believe that I can bring in Superior here, here and kill him. I do want to check his base speed one more time. He's 76 base speed, and he's boost, he's boosted speed a little bit. I'm going to hope that he doesn't... He, has, he doesn't have Ice Punch for sure. That actually doesn't kill... This is very scary. He's going to have Ice Punch or Fire Punch. That kills me. Wow, dude, he might counter-sweep me with this Hitmonchan. It's going to be really close. He's going to die to... To toxic here. I still have two huge threats in the uh, mill tank and the earth ring. And the earth ring's in a pretty damn good spot here because I can T punch the Altaria. He shouldn't be able to do super effective against anything against me. I should be able to. <clears throat> I should be able to be a really good threat here. I should be able to stand up against his team pretty well. Let's see what he brings in. He's going to bring in Hypno <clears throat> named Swag, super appropriately. I'm going to go ahead and. I think just facade does more damage because of stab, even though I'm not status yet. So I'm going to throw, throw up the facade, do 40%. That's pretty damn good. Hopefully he doesn't have focus blast. Switch a rue. I actually don't know what that does. That switch items. So he's going to take my flame orb and put one on me. 
Sticky Barb. Sticky Barb's gonna, what, poison me? Do damage to me every turn? That's okay, I mean, I can just keep facading. I mean, he might have Slag Off. I think Sla Slack Off can wish. But I'm gonna kill him before his wish is gonna go off, so this is actually totally fine. <laughs> I think I just win this game, which is pretty incredible, so pretty happy with that. I should have T-punched in preparation. That was a misplay. Oh, it was a huge misplay. There's no... Don't do what I just did. There's no reason not to T-punch there. T oh, what the hell? Citrus Berry? Oh, his wish came true. I'm silly. <laughs> Whew, I'm going to hope he can't kill me. I'm at like 55%. Draco Meteor will for sure kill me. He's a special attacker. I actually don't know Altaria's damage enough. It's mixed. Interesting. I haven't seen Altaria in an extremely long time. I think I can still win this game. I'm not too worried. Not too stressed. He is... He looks special slash mixed. So I'm going to go ahead and throw up a Body Slam. Okay, Body Slam's just going to kill the Hypno. It would have been cool if I would have cursed there, actually. But I'm gonna throw, he's just going to scout with his Hypno, which is fair. He's going to bring this back in and Draco Meteor. So he's going to bring this in. Draco Meteor. I'm just going to Milk Drink. See, I hope I'm not faster than him. I really hope I'm not ah, I'm faster than him. Um, so he's gonna, oh, he's gonna hurricane. Okay, but I can milk drink this turn. Damn, that means I should have body slammed. I became confused. No! This game is gonna be so close. I don't know if I can win this game. If I hit myself in confusion here, I just lose. Okay, whew. Wow, I'm, oh, heart's pumping a little. Very close game. Hurricane for 56%. I don't see how I win this game. That's so sad. Man, he really he really messed me up with that Hitmonchan. I didn't play well enough around the Hitmonchan. He didn't play well enough. He was faster there. Why was he faster? Am I dumb? Why was he all of a sudden faster? That was weird. Did his thing get raised some way? But Hurricane can miss... It is 70% accuracy, which is huge. So, like, now I'm faster again. I don't know why I became confused again. Okay, the conf confusion both times is super unlucky. I mean, I, just, I, mean I'm, I can just hope he misses. There we go. I hope for the miss. If I hit myself in confusion here, it's... I think it's still winnable? No, maybe not. Okay, that actually might be the only... I think that is... I mean, I, I think I might still die to a hurricane here. That might be the... No, I'm faster though. Please milk drink. Please get it off. Okay. That was wow, that was very lucky. That was maybe the only turn in the game where if he misses Hurricane that I can like, you know, live. That was pretty shocking. How many P how much PP does Hurricane have? Is another great question. Leftovers is really keeping me at the perfect amount of HP to stay in this game. Really, really important. Sound my vision, milk drink here. Let's see if he throws up a hurricane. He has I wonder if he has roost or any way to heal. If he has no way to heal, I just win this game for sure. 58%. Wow. He could also play for a crit. So if he gets a crit, he could just win. Being faster is really a huge deal here. Get my milk drink off. Heal up. Oh, what a crazy game. Thank God my milk drink is PP maxed. I don't know how many how much PP Hurricane has. I want to say like 15, but I could just be wrong. Dude, another another crazy long game. The last game was another crazy like long installer game, but this one now this one's obviously not as bad. Um, a little bit of a spoiler alert: the last game that'll end up getting a video of its own involved my opponent having a shuckle, so that game went very very long. <clears throat> I just gotta keep milk drinking. It's really all I can do. It's my best bet at winning this game. He's missed so few hurricanes. Can we talk about that? Can we talk about his hurricane luck? I believe he's missed two. He might. He, I mean, he's probably he's probably gonna miss maybe this one. He's probably he's probably just on on rate to miss one very soon. So maybe it's fine. If he misses, what? Oh my goodness! He's choice scarfed. Oh my goodness! Why didn't I realize it sooner? Easy win. Easy win. I do like that his name Burb. I don't know if I deserve that. I didn't realize he was Choice Starf sooner. I don't know if I deserve that win. But we'll take it! Woo! Two wins in a row. 
ton of reward points great game great way to end the vanilla showcase thank you guys so much for watching i just want to say thank you guys so much for watching this video and for putting your time into me i really really appreciate it you know and if you liked this video please like it if you disliked it please dislike it please leave any feedback criticism comments in the comments please spam me i love responding to every comment that's a question or any, you know, anything anything respondable i'll happily happily respond with i love helping people i love spreading information i love learning myself and i love teaching as best as possible uh and it's you know it's a fun time so i appreciate it thank you guys so much have a great day thank you goodbye